But we are here today to talk about the best herbs for your skin health. That includes things like wounds, acne, aging, um, cell death, uh, blood circulation, hydrating your skin, moisturizing your skin, all those different things involving your skin and all the different ways they can help you. Now, I'm going to start this off with this here. Kaboom! There is a monster like super long list of herbs <laughs> probably like 40 plus different herbs at least on just on the offhand even i could go even deeper on this list probably of herbs that say they are like the end all be all for skin so that in itself makes it hard to be like oh let's do a top 10 list for the best herbs for skin instead i did a very basic um 20 of the most recognized herbs for your skin so we're going to go over those in detail otherwise i'm going to keep running this list on repeat um so you can you know see all the herbs that uh, could possibly help you i mean there's lots of diff different odd ones like self-heal there um juniper berries um yeah a whole bunch of different uh, monster lists so let's just get right to it you know let's get to it let's not waste any time why would we waste time that's what we're here for is to get you on this list so uh Let's start you off at the top of the list, which is kaboom, aloe. Aloe has uh, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, and of course, cooling properties. It's very hydrating and moisturizing, and it can help produce things like uh, collagen and elastin fibers that can make the skin more elastic and prevent wrinkles. It can also help uh, speed up uh, wound healing by improving blood circulation and preventing cell death around the wounds. Now, it has been uh, used to treat uh, dry or rough skin, uh, things like burns, insect bites, uh, rashes, infections, pimples, and uh, allergies. Uh, aloe vera is also ideal for, um, they say, normal to dry skin and, and a little bit for oily types as well. And, and in addition to all that, it's a natural UV inhibitor. So, you know, pretty darn awesome amongst all that, isn't it? So number two on my list, like I said, these are in no particular order, is good old-fashioned turmeric. Yes, turmeric is good for so many things, including this particular list. They, they call it the Indian solid gold for a reason. Basically, it has antibacterial, antifungal, and other properties that helps uh, treat things from skin irritation, melanoma, insect bites and wounds. And there's been various studies that show it can, in fact, help uh, inflammation and infectious disorders of the skin. It's also been used to treat uh, things like psoriasis, eczema, atomic dermatitis, uh, atrogenic der dermatitis, uh, and curcumin, of course, the main product of turmeric can help your skin appear younger, you know, as it can deal with things like acne, wrinkles, scars, and pigmentation. Uh, and it's good from anywhere from dry to oily skin. So very helpful, Mr. Turmeric, you are. Yes, you are. We love you, Mr. Turmeric. Okay, so number three on my list today is good old-fashioned mint yes mint minty mint let's get you on the screen mr mint oh mint uh so mint is a great pimple fighter it can help uh, clear out your clogged follicles to reduce blackheads and uh, various forms of acne it's also supposed to be really good for itchy or infected skin and it's also very helpful mostly for people with oily skin so um yeah that one in particular is good on uh, those particular aspects obviously it's good for some other things as well but next one green tea like I said, i'm going to zip through a lot of these a uh, green tea is good for like a many other herbs on this list that can help uh, as a tea and topically um, it can help prevent uh, sunburns by thickening your epidermis very nice to know it can help you speed heal your wounds uh, fight aging and cancer and it's also helpful for various skin disorders also like psoriasis so yeah green tea is very nice Another one that I'm a big fan of, cinnamon. Some people out there are allergic to cinnamon. We had a friend over recently that was allergic to it. But uh, if you're not, uh, you're lucky because it's a great out-and-out -out antioxidant powerhouse. And there's very few herbs or spices that can match cinnamon in its antioxidant power. And that makes it especially helpful for skin aging and skin diseases. Now, cinnamaldehyde, uh, which is uh, one of its main constituents... Uh, helps to promote collagen production and it can also help uh, treat mild to moderate fa facial acne and help healing as well um number six on our list is um no not you you're a dandelion is you your cha chamomile chamomile can help uh, be used as a skin cleanser you'll find it in lots of skin cleansers out on the market um 
Helps with eczema, sores, bruises, wounds, and in various in forms of inflammation of the skin. One of its main uh, compounds is alpha bisabolol, um, which has also been known to ease discoloration, which is caused by sunburns. Um, it also has apigenin, uh, which improves the skin's barrier to make it easier to keep irritants out. And it can even be used as an alternative to cortisone to help reduce swelling, itching, and burning in the skin. Very cool, that. Let's switch back to the uh, main screen here. Oh, wait, let's show, show you a quick shot of this. Chickweed! Chickweed's our next one. So, um, chickweed is a, a very cooling and moistening one. It's also great for chapped skin in particular, insect bites, uh, burns and wounds. It can also help with skin problems, uh, again, psoriasis, uh, psoriasis and uh, dermatitis. And thanks to its various emollient properties, it can also help with dry skin and in general discomfort and irritation in the skin. And it's supposed to be good for all skin types, which is very nice. I just mentioned dandelion. Dandelion is next on the list. Um, I've touted uh, its benefits many times. I'll probably put it in the little thing up top here. I'm one of those little discs that if you want to watch it, I've got a full video all about the benefits of dandelion. You can go watch that next. Um, but it's, it has all various kinds of pro good things for the skin. In particular, helping the ability to treat warts and boils, <laughs> of all things. But again, it's another one that can be helped used for eczema, acne, and sun damage. Um, you'll find a lot of these all say the same things. But like, uh, like I said, there has been research uh, on these ones that I'm mentioning at least. Um, on the various things I've talked about. So there, there is backing behind them on all of these aspects. Uh, next one is rosemary. Uh, another very popular one. I also think I have a video on rosemary. I've talked about how it's great. If you've not seen it, the history of rosemary, I talk a little bit about how it's been used throughout the years for people and their various things, not only skin properties, but helping you smell better. So, but of course, rosmarinic acid, which is part of the reason it's called rosemary, and caffic acid are found in rosemary, which help us slow the signs of aging um, caused by UV rays. Um, otherwise, it can pretty much help involving anything moisturizing the skin. It's uh, best suited for oily and aging skin, and it can be help, uh, good at keeping the blemishes off the skin and tightening loose skin, apparently. So, um, next one up is our old friend, Monsieur Abbezel. Good old Basil is very unique as it has many usable varietals. Um, there's, uh, and we'll talk a, a bit more specifically on this one about it because common basil um, or Osmum basilicum is the one you'll find most often for eating, um, which has antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, analgesic properties that deal with various skin diseases, infections, and wound healing. Um, but depending on the type of basil you get, it can get different results. So Tulsi basil is another very popular varietal that's good for, it's considered the best overall for skin problems. Um, but both common and a Thai basil can be used for other various um, more specific skin problems as well. Um, now basil's antibacterial properties means that it can be used for a variety of things, including stuff like ringworm, oddly enough. Yeah, ringworm of all things. Uh, it's one you wouldn't think of. Uh, now, here's one that I know in particular because of the um, movie and uh, play version, particularly the play version because I directed it, called Harold and Maud. If you guys haven't heard it, it's a 70s movie that was pretty darn good. Um, I'm not sure how well it holds up these days. I watched it like 10 years ago. so. But I directed a very uh, great version of the play. Thank you all my wonderful actors and crew for that. I uh, re really loved that one. Um, sadly... Don't have a copy of it. Oh. Um, but anyways, um, oat straw tea or oat straw. They mentioned oat straw tea in the play in the movie. Um, but uh, yeah, oat straw apparently is good for your skin. And uh, it's not the best tasting stuff. So you're probably going to want some uh, honey or something else in it. Because I've had it before and it's just a little bit like, eh, it's not the best, you know. But it has polysaccharides and silicon dioxide that can help uh, regulate your skin processes. And it's excellent for a facial wash. Um, oat makes sense, you know. Um, but yeah, it is very good for events, various skin conditions, especially ones that cause itching. Uh, next up is neem, which is where you get neem oil. Um, many people know it mainly because of that, because it helps. You know, neem oil is great for using in the old uh, garden to help those pesky bugs. But um, uh, in particular, neem 
in its other forms can be used to help tighten your skin pores and remove pollutants and even reduce under eye darkness like you know those evil bags under your eyes so another good use for it and uh, next up number 13 on your list is sage yeah I'm a good old friend sage I have another monster video on the benefits of sage tea uh, which is also the benefits of sage it's pretty much exactly the same thing just you know slightly different ways that it benefits you um, but yeah, go check that out if you want to as well. Um, it's a awesome, awesome, badass tea for spotty skin and dealing with saggy and wrinkly skin. Um, it can help cleanse uh, your skin as well, closes pores, helps with the elasticity. Basically, it's just a monster astringent, you know, to help to tighten up those pores and helps with cell regeneration as well. It can even help with things like chapped lips and other dry skin problems. Uh, next up is Witch Hazel, number 14. Uh, so anyone with familiar with any kind of wound healing or some other types of skin problems will have heard of Witch Hazel already. There's lots of different products on the market involving Witch Hazel and uh, itchiness and uh, also with wound healing properties. So if you haven't come across this yet, you, you will. You could easily just go to the store and find some Witch Hazel, I'm sure. Mm. It's also one that's apparently really good for oily skin and can help uh, reduce uh, oxidative damage and, uh, of course, shrink your pores and uh, help with various skin irritants. Uh, next up is uh, Calendula. Um, oddly enough, this is one that uh, I heard of because um, we have been trying to deal with... Um, some cradle cap and other issues with uh, our child's skin, our six-month-old, and calendula was one of the things they actually had in that one of, the pro one of the products we got. So there's very few herbs on this list that can be actually said yes, you can use them for kids, but calendula is one of them, which is very great. Um, but uh, it's lots of carotenoids and flavonoids, uh, carotene carotenoids, uh, words. So no surprise it's on the li this list. It's great for skin infections and diseases, burns and scalds, burns. It's also a great wound healer and cut healer and apparently can even help with hemorrhoids. Yeah, who knew? Um, but it's also, like I said, it's supposed to be gentle on so babies can use it for you know, rashes as well. Uh, next up, lavender. Good old lavender. Yay, lavender. So this uh, one uh, is another one that they say could be good for kids two or older. Um, I suppose if you used it light enough, you probably could use it for younger kids as well. But uh, you know, to be safe, they say two or older on lavender, because often, especially if you're using it in lavender oil form, that can be rather strong. Um, same thing with like peppermint oil, that can be rather strong, which is why spearmint is considered much better for kids than peppermint is. But going back to lavender, um, English lavender they, is the one that they say is uh, good for kids two or older. Spike lavender isn't re recommended at all for kids. And Spanish lavender is recommended, isn't even recommended for skin care. So if you come across Spanish lavender, just forget about it for your skin. So this is another one just depending on the type that you have. But your standard English lavender um, and the ones that you'll find uh, often on the market are fine. Um, but this one, again, runs the gamut of various skin problems. Um, get help with all different kinds of things. Uh, and we won't even get into them because we've talked about them all already. Thyme! Okay, so according to science, uh, thyme, our next one, is a really good clearing one, which is great for acne. And, other, and you can find it a lot of times in some conventional store-bought remedies as well. It's a super antibacterial as well, which can help with blemishes, rashes, and sores. Um, it's also another one that's really good for oily skin if you have that oily skin problem. And it's, uh, it has some more specific ones that it can deal with like scabies, lice, and even thrush. So if you're dealing with any of those um, peculiar ones, then there you go. Time. Get some time for yourself. Another less common one that uh, it, a lot of people who aren't really into the world of herbs have maybe not have heard of is horsetail. So horsetail has lots of great things including silica and collagen. Um, it can help promote wound healing and relieve pain as well. Um, it's great at strengthening your nails. And it's also good for all skin types and even great for your scalp. So it's you know, also going to be good for hair as well. We're talking about that. In fact, most of these things can, uh, on this list are probably going to be good for your hair as well. I call it primarily a skin list, but 
that can actually definitely help with your hair as well. Next up is alfalfa. Alfalfa is another one that you may not realize is great for skin problems, um, but alfalfa, oddly enough, prevent, prevents photophaging and oxidative stress, which are, of course, related to skin diseases, diseases, and can also accelerate skin repair and reduce the appearances of aging. Ooh. Hello, Melatu. Good to see you. Thanks for showing up. I uh, just noticed in my comments here, I just noticed somebody commented. Yay! <laughs> She sees, says, oh, I adored your channel since the time you advised us about Sage Tea. So you already seen my Sage Tea video. Thank you, Mella. Appreciate it. Um, but last on the list, last but not least, is red clover. Red clover, not like regular clover. Um, but this one is on here particularly because it can help, help uh, uh, dealing with eczema. They say red clover in particular is really good at eczema, and it can help eliminate toxins that uh, trigger inflammation and cause eczema flare-ups. So... There you go. Nice and fast. Boom, boom, boom. That's my list for you. I ran the extra side list of all the other herbs that are good for, you know, skin problems uh, already. And there you go. That's done. Unless anybody's got any questions, I have finished my list like I meant to. And uh, I'm next up on my videos is probably going to be black garlic versus regular garlic. What's the difference between the two? If you haven't heard of black garlic before, very cool stuff. You'll learn all about it in my video. Be looking out for that. Uh, it'll take a little bit longer than I hoped because I have to reshoot like two-thirds of it tomorrow. My phone apparently corrupted two of my files. So I went to go edit it today and it's like, oh, sorry, your files are corrupted. So, yay, so much fun. The world of video shooting. Haha. <laughs> but otherwise... That's it for today. It's Beth. Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't seen them yet, please watch one of my other videos. One of the ones I mentioned. It'll pro if if not, it'll but they'll show up here. One of the ones you can watch. Click on them. You know. And otherwise, take care of each other, and have a great day. We love y'all.